Shalom, 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 Israel. What's going on? And to all the family, all my Christian brothers and sisters, what's going on? I'm back once again with another video, man. Um, it's been a minute, but hey, listen, um, I've been toiling and wanted to just, I thought about it, I talked to some of the elders, man, and just really wanted to uh, just address something real quick, you know. Uh, it's a very familiar, uh, individual, uh, who, uh, I want to kind of clear up just some, a few things that I think that, was misrepresented, uh, quite, um, in a way. It kind of seems though this individual kind of has the, uh, habit of misrepresentation and things like that. Uh, so there was some statements that was made. Um, there was a list that I was put on, which I have no problem with the list. You know, lately, uh, over the past, uh, maybe two or three years, my name has been kind of bubbling, uh, within the community. Um, and that bubble had associated me with certain things as, you know, a particular topic uh, of things. Um, and to be honest with you, um, it's kind of worked out very well for me uh, in the sense that um, it has kind of drawn more people to go see and research. Who is this guy uh, that's being talked about and associated with? Uh, a particular professor, uh, who is this guy I've been talked about, uh, been associated with, um, you know, making his church congregation, uh, take DNA tests, which is not true. That's another, that was kind of one of the first, um, uh, indictments against me, which, you know, never was cleared up or nobody even apologized even after they figured out what was going on. But I want to address something here. Uh, there was a statement that was made uh, and used the name or our congregation name, which is Boom Church. Um, but our name uh, by the individual that, was play that placed us, placed me on the list, um, our name Believers of One Messiah. And um, it was used in the a way of misrepresenting and stating that our ministry it's almost an inclusive ministry to the perspective that we are in cahoots or in covenant with those that don't believe in Christ, Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua, Yahweh, Shai, Yeshua, Yahusha, whichever name you want to say. But we're talking about the savior, you know, of the world uh, who redeemed Israel and mankind uh, back to the father. But it was used in a way to misrepresent to say that believers of one Messiah is used in a way or we named our congregation that because we're inclusive that we are in covenant with non-messianics you know there of course we've got the boom church believers of one messiah that's william brown aka richard katz on there um this is interesting you know why i'm on here notice the the, the thing it's called boom by the way pretty dope name right boom you gotta like that you know Boom. Here's the thing, though. <laughs> They're in cahoots with Hebrew Israelites who are Old Testament only. So he's willing to team up with, because I've seen some of their conferences and stuff. He's willing to team up with people who don't even believe in this Messiah. And yet their name of the group is Believers of One Messiah. Well, then stop teaming up with non-Messianics, man. But non-Messianics, man. But non-Messianics, man. But non-Messianics, man. But non messianics, man. Um, and then it was also stated that the particular interview said they've seen our conferences, and I'm just trying to understand and wonder um, when were they invited to the conference? When did they show up to the conference? Um, the only thing that they could go by is not doing the proper research. In understanding that um, the particular individual I think that's being um, that I'm indicted that I'm being indicted for in fellowship with is Morazan Lex. The only way that you can be that light that the Creator spoke of us being to the nations is that you are first and foremost applying the Torah itself. You have to live it first. You have to become it. You have to get in that space where you are a reflection of Torah. A brother said it to me this way, and I'll end with this. Y'all might not like this part. Bring it out. Uh-oh.
I come from a non messianic temple. You can hear crickets. <laughs> This February coming will be 27 years in this way of life for me. And all 27 I spent in a non-Messianic synagogue. And among many of the things that we learned, we were against so many things. For instance, we opened up the Berit, uh, Berit HaKadash in the New Testament where it says, any man that has seen uh, the Father, has seen, seen the Son, has seen the Father. To non-Messianics, we thought that was blasphemy. Why would that be a blasphemous statement? The true testimony of righteousness is that when a person meets you, they should feel like they had an encounter with God. And that's kind of funny, you know, because um, based on there's only two events that Maury Zion Lex was uh, invited to. Um, one was in New York City in 2019. Uh, which Brother Berean is very familiar with that particular conference. Uh, he was invited there. Um, he was he was not able to make it. Um, and the second one was here in Atlanta last year where we had a conference uh, about Jeremiah 23 and 3. Uh, and everyone there was Messianic. See, the assumption was because the particular individual didn't do the proper research to understand the journey that Maury Zion Lex had been on for quite some time. Um, I'm going to show you some video here so that way you can really, you know, look at this and get a, a clear picture of what I'm talking about. To touch on what I'm already saying, <clears throat> Maury, correct me if I'm wrong, there was a time where we were at odds. We were online. Yep. And you invited me here. Mm -hmm. And we've been in great dialogue for some time. But there was a time that that wasn't necessarily true. Mm -hmm. I want to say, and I want to not have you agree, but ask, do you agree? What element made it so that you and I could see past our differences and acknowledge first that we serve the same God, mm -hmm. and two, that we are brothers, and because of those variables, nothing can stop our relationship. Right. Was that not true? That's true. Torah. Yeah. All right. So the Torah is at the base of all of our teachings. Every single person on the planet, mm -hmm. meaning the Word of God, because that's what the Torah is. And it's because of the Word of God that we can sit here and amicably trade different views. Mm -hmm. Amicably, because not a single person on this panel has an intent to destroy. Even, I'm going to use today's language, some of the younger going to feel me throwing shade. Mm -hmm. We're not throwing shade. We're here to speak the word of God. But more importantly, in a brotherly and sisterly fashion that reflects the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And I think we are successful thus far in doing that today. Mm -hmm. We are successful in that we can talk about some of our differences. Let me tell you something right now. And I'm going to say it the way... My old school teacher used to say, when he say right, he's R-A-T-T, -T, right now. <laughs> Let me tell you something, right now. It's easy to sit at a table and agree. The true test of character is maintaining your spirit when a viewpoint is brought forth that you vehemently disagree with, but you still show your godliness by allowing people to speak. So while we definitely want to get to the commonality, we got to show our godliness. And to me, that's best demonstrated in how you deal with a different opinion. Yeah. Are we ready? Yeah. Um, you take one individual. Let me, let me also start with this. Before I was Apostle William Brown, before I was Bishop William Brown, before I was Dr. William Brown, before I even started a congregation, I was Evangelist William Brown or Evangelist Majors. That was the name I was known for in the Christian church and in the Israelite community. If you understand the power of evangelism, what people who aren't a true evangelist don't 
possess is patience, long suffering, temperance, compassion, and are willing to go above and beyond like a Navy SEAL without compromise to win someone or to display a level of love so unconditional that you see their end and not their current. Evangelists are like Navy SEALs. But when an individual understand that and so torn and so driven by trying to prove every Israelite is wrong in doctrine and theology and all this other stuff, fail to realize. And I want to truly add, fail to even consider and to obtain revelation of what Jesus is doing and calling an individual. See, there are your Barnabases. We all need a Barnabas. Every, I know everybody talks about Paul and Peter, but what about Barnabas? I liken Barnabas. You know, the middle guy. The guy that's willing to do the confirming and affirming of a brethren. Because why? Because I've spent time with a brother and I would not dare step in the way of the most high and even say or even look for credit for anywhere Zion Lex is right now, my dear brother. But what I can say is I did the job of loving him. I did the job of checking in on him. And I did the job of praying for him unconditionally without ceasing. What do I mean? Yes, he came to New I came to New York City in 2019 and he was a part of a panel discussion that had Messianic, whether they were Christians or they were Israelites. It was held at a Messianic temple where our dear sister only love was attending. I think it was in the Bronx. His first time he was invited to a Messianic synagogue or a Messianic temple or anywhere that way without being judged, without being ridiculed and with the utmost respect and love for a individual. Here's the other thing that I that I that I want to share. The individual failed to talk about all the Christian churches that I've been invited to. See, one thing about me, I don't go pursuing any opportunity because as an evangelist, I understand that the opportunities are going to come. My preparation is prayer and fasting awaiting the assignment. I'm not pursuing anybody or anything. When I went to uh, the frequency conference with Eric Mason, I didn't ask, can I come? I was invited to come. They didn't talk about the Christian, all the Christian churches that invite me. What about the Jewish synagogues that invite me? It's more fitting to say He's in cahoots with people who don't even believe in Christ. Why? So the followers would say, well done, sir. Well done. You have pointed out yet another heretic or another uh, 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 someone who's trying to hurt and tarnish the church. We're behind you, brother. I question the motive. Is it about the applause? The applause? Is it about the cheers? Is it about being the one to say I took down? 
many Hebrew Israelites? Or is it truly about the gospel? When it's about the gospel, there's a certain way you act. When it's about the gospel, there's a certain way you move. When it's about the gospel, there's a certain assignment that you're assigned to. Alton, that's beef. No. Zion ain't Old Testament only. They say they said he he said he explained Isaiah fifty three. Now he know the suffering servant not to be the nation of Israel, but Messiah. That's usually how we have interpreted it, and we got that from Messianic Israelites in the first century. Oh Lord, Israel got some explaining to do. He just started preaching good. He just started preaching good. He said, listen, if it's about truth, that, that, that other stuff, that could just move in with a gang. If you open truth, you're supposed to go wherever the truth takes you. Lord, and I'm on my way to low. Supposed to be. Let me see what he, let me see what he's elevating church folk at. Oh, Grace and peace, Zion. You can hear me? Shalom, brother. Hey, shalom, brother Barin. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, you sound good, man. Good to have you on, fam. You talking good, you talking good on here. I'm moving around because I'm getting ready to go to Home Depot, but my man gonna talk to you. And and if hopefully you don't mind taking a couple of questions. We want to listen to some of your video, but it's it's good to get it directly from the horse's mouth. I came to the conclusion within the last seven years that the evidence certainly points in the direction of um Isaiah 53 talking about the Messiah. But I want to be clear because I do stand on my square. Um, not only do I believe that Isaiah 53 is talking about the Messiah, but I emphatically believe that it's referring to who I would call Yeshua. Well, my, my epiphany didn't come from Isaiah 53 per se, right? Um, it, it's just that now with my newfound understanding that Yeshua is a Messiah and is the Messiah, 